Hi there, and welcome back to Dr. Adam ASMR. I'm glad you're able to make it for your appointment this week, and I understand that you're having some discomfort in your abdomen, so we're going to look into that today. Now, we may need to do some imaging uh, that we may not have in the office here, so we'll discuss our options and go from there, but first, let me take some notes as to what's bringing you in. Okay. And for how many days? Okay. Where exactly in your abdomen? Okay. Did it change where it was feeling or it's been in the same spot the whole time? Hmm. Okay. Out of 10, how bad is it? I'm sorry to hear that. Have you been able to eat or drink? Hmm. Any fevers at home? Okay. All right. Okay. And no surgeries in the past? Okay. Very good. Well, I'm sorry you're going through all of that. I know that's a lot. I think the best way to get to the bottom of this is to do a full abdominal exam today and see if we can figure out what's going on. But first of all, one of the most important things are vital signs. And so if it's okay with you, I'd like to take some vitals. Okay, great. I'm just going to put on some gloves first here. Excellent. Now, as always, I'll start by borrowing your wrist here. Okay? Great. And you just relax. You can do some nice, easy breathing in through the nose and out through your mouth. Very good. Don't worry, I'll do the counting. You just focus on the breathing. Good, very good. Your heart rate's actually a bit fast today. It's almost 100, actually. I wonder if you have a temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and use this to take a temperature in your ear. Is that okay with you? Okay, just sit tight for me. And let me just... Good, okay. Interesting. You do have a bit of a low-grade fever, about 101. So it is technically a fever. And greater than 100.4 would be a fever. Uh, it's not too high, but it's definitely not normal, and that might explain why you're not feeling well. Let's take your blood pressure. Is that okay? Okay, I'm going to slide this on your arm here. And we'll tighten it down. Good. Now... As you know, we'll go ahead and inflate the cuff here, just like this. But of course, as it gets tighter, that gauge will continue to rise. I need to put my stethoscope in, so I won't be able to hold it for you the whole time. Is that okay? Are you ready? It'll get a little bit tight. Okay, great. Okay, very good. 
Let me get that cuff off you here. So, some good news. The blood pressure is actually normal. So that is reassuring. I would be concerned if your blood pressure was low today. If it were high from the discomfort, that would be a normal response, and normal is also an okay blood pressure, but low would be concerning. Thankfully, that's not what's going on. Now, uh, I know that you mentioned your abdominal pain was the worst, but in an effort of keeping you from moving up and down, up and down, I'm going to take a listen to your heart and lungs first, just so that you're not changing positions repeatedly. Is that okay? Okay. Let me take a listen to your lungs first. I know we don't think that's the problem, but let's just be sure. Now with these, I'd like you to take just a nice deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Good. Another breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Good. Breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Good. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. Very good. Just listen on the back in just a couple of places here. Deep breath in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Good. And in through your nose. And out through your mouth. Okay. Your lungs sound clear. Would you like to take a listen? Okay. Let me just wipe these down. Okay. Keep your head nice and still for me. Good. Relaxing, isn't it? Okay. Now, as I mentioned, I'll just take a quick listen to your heart, and then we'll get into an abdominal exam. Okay? Great. Excellent. Your heart sounds totally normal. I'm guessing you'd like to take a listen. Sure, that's no problem. Okay, put these on. Okay. I hope that was relaxing for you. I know I mention it all the time, but the heartbeat is very relaxing, so it's a nice uh, benefit of coming in for your weekly exam. Now, at this point, I would like to do an abdominal exam. So I'll have you change into the gown, and I'll also have you lay down on the exam table. So I'll step out and give you a minute to do that, and I'll be back shortly. Okay, how are you feeling down there? Comfortable? Okay, very good. I'll walk you through the abdominal exam. I don't want you to be nervous during this. We'll start with auscultation. That's listening for bowel sounds. Now, since this is a primary abdominal complaint, we're going to be a bit more thorough today. Okay? I'll let you know what's next after that. Is that fair? Excellent. Okay. Let me take a listen. Hmm. 
Mm. And I, I don't want you to be alarmed. It may take up to a minute uh, for me to hear bowel sounds, even longer sometimes. I'll be checking all four quadrants. That's totally normal, and I want to give your body time to make sure that I'm not missing anything. So you just relax, breathe nice and easy in through your nose and out through your mouth. We'll do one together now before I listen to the next quadrant. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Excellent. You can continue to breathe like that. Very good. I was able to hear bowel sounds without problem in all four quadrants, so that is reassuring. Uh, what I'd like to do next is percussion. We'll do percussion and then we'll follow that with our light to deep palpation. We do percussion first so that we can get the most accurate exam, and that's really why we auscultate first as well. That make sense? If I start pushing around, I'll be disturbing the abdominal contents and we could be an inaccurate exam. So that's why we go in this order. Let me get started. We'll do percussion first here. On percussion, everything is normal, which is good. I'm going to do light to deep palpation now. Now, I know you said it's hurting the most down in the right lower quadrant area, so we'll stay away from that until the end. Okay? Great. We'll start up here in the left upper. You feel some light pressure, and I just want you to let me know if there's anything painful. And we'll get a little bit deeper with that pressure, just kind of moving these small circles here. That's okay. Great. Again, just once more light to deep here. Good. Okay. And the left lower quadrant. Light palpation here is okay. Good. And deeper. Okay. Now we'll go right in between the upper and lower quadrants, kind of the mid abdominal area here. Good. Good. Okay. We'll come to the right upper. Light palpation here. Getting a bit deeper with the palpation. Good. Do deeper. Good, okay. Now I'm going to go in the periumbilical space or around the umbil, I guess, or the belly button. Okay, great. Any pain in here? No. Okay, a little, little bit more pressure here. Good, good, okay. Now we'll come to the right lower quadrant. Now you let me know if this hurts. Just light pressure here, that's okay. Start pressing a little bit more hard, more firm here. How's that pressure, that hurts, okay. Yeah, we'll stop, no problem, not a problem, okay. Um, I'd like to just compare the left to the right one time here. So we'll go to the left quadrant again. I'm going to press in here. And as I press all the way in, how does that feel? 
That's okay. Okay. As I come over to the right, and I just want you to stop me when it hurts. I'm going to press in gently. Okay, that already hurts. Yep, we'll stop there. Okay. I'm sorry that's so tender for you. Um, what I'd like to do now is have you raise your leg against my hand. It'll just be on one side. So we'll start on the left side first. This is one of our special tests. Go ahead and lift your leg up against my hand. Good. That feels okay? Great. Okay. I'll have you do it on the right side now. Go ahead and lift. Oh, okay. You can stop. It's a little bit uncomfortable. Okay. What I'm going to do now is palpate on the top of your hips here. We call these iliac crests. And I'm going to measure out the distance to your belly button. Okay. And we have... I'm going to do a press in here, okay? I want you to tell me if it hurts more when I press in or when I let go. Pressing in deep, and then I let go quickly. Which one hurts more? I'm sorry, it's uncomfortable. I know this is an important test, though. This is called a McBurney's point. It's worse when I let go. Okay. We don't have to repeat that test. One other test I'd like to do is in the right upper quadrant. I think this is much less likely, but we should be thorough. This is called a Murphy's test. It evaluates the gallbladder. So I'll kind of percuss your liver out again here. Okay, great. You'll feel my hands kind of hook under your ribs here and a bunch of just pressure. I want you to take a big deep breath in on three. One, two, three. Good. No discomfort there. Good. And a positive test will be something we call an inspiratory halt, or if you stopped breathing very quickly, just momentarily, from the pain, but that didn't happen, and I don't think this is your gallbladder. And overall, on inspection, I don't see any rashes on the abdomen. There's no ecchymosis around the umbilicus or any concerns. The last area I'd like to palpate is just the flank, so I'll start on your right flank if that's okay. Good. Just a little bit of pressure back here. Any tenderness as I kind of tap on the back of your ribs here? No? Okay, I'm going to reach over on the other side here. And just kind of feel on the back of the ribs. That's okay there? Good, okay. And you'll feel me tapping again. We call this a Lloyd sign. That's okay, okay, good, good. All right, that's a reassuring abdominal exam in the flank, I should say, but I'm concerned about the right lower quadrant. Why don't you go ahead and get comfortable, sit back up. I'll be back in a few minutes and we can discuss what this may mean. Okay. Hey there. Okay. So I think we have a lot to unpack here and I'd like to just update the computer real quick. Um, I'll tell you all about the exam and what it may mean in just one second. Let me just get these and your vitals updated. Just going to be clicking some of the check boxes here for our physical exam findings. Sorry that took so long. I just want to make sure I have all the details correct. Now, here's what I'm concerned about. As you may know, uh, your appendix lives in the right lower quadrant of our abdomen. Early in a disease process, you may feel tenderness around the umbilicus or the belly button. But over the first few hours to days, that pain will migrate down towards the right lower quadrant, right where you have pain. Now. A McBurney's test, or a McBurney's point, will evaluate for the appendix. We're pressing generally right where the appendix is. And appendicitis is inflammation. Itis is inflammation. So what happens is when you have inflammation in that area and I press down, it hurts. And when I let go quickly, that tissue 
rapidly pulls apart. And that can irritate, just as you would imagine an inflamed area would feel. So, here are our options. Option number one would be to get a CAT scan right now. It's a CT scan, and it's x-ray radiation, but it's the best test to diagnose an appendicitis. I think it's the safest test. Now that said, you are able to tolerate food, and your pain is, I would say, severe, but maybe not a full 10 out of 10. You're able to walk, and that is somewhat reassuring. However, I don't think this is anything to mess around with. On the same end of the scale, I can't make you get a test you don't want. So, one option is we could admit you to the hospital to have repeat abdominal exams done overnight to make sure it doesn't get worse. We could also do antibiotics if we think that this is an appendicitis. The other option would be to get the CAT scan. We would know right away if this was or was not an appendicitis. Of course, if it was, you would likely need surgery. If it's not, well, then we'll know that this could be any number of things, but it's not a life-threatening appendicitis, which may rupture. I'm going to let you think about what you'd like to do for a few minutes. And of course, either way, I'm going to need to see you back next week, whether that's for post-op or to further review some imaging. I'd like you to comment down below which one you'd like to do, and my assistant will set the test up. And of course, don't forget to hit subscribe, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed, because we'll see you next week. Hi, welcome back to Dr. Adam ASMR. I heard that you're having some abdominal pain today, so I want to thank you for taking the time to make an appointment and come be evaluated. We're going to try our best to get to the bottom of this now. Abdominal pain, as I'm sure you know, is very difficult to diagnose what exactly is causing your symptoms, but we are going to do everything that we can today to try and figure that out. Now, to start, I'd like to get some vital signs. I know it can be stressful sometimes. There's something called white coat hypertension. So all I would like you to do is just relax. Let's do some easy breathing together. Take a deep breath in through your nose. and out through your mouth. That's good. Deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Very good. And don't worry, we'll get history and more information about this in just a little bit here. Let's do one more deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Great, excellent. Now, I'd like to get your vital signs and we'll start with that, and afterward, I'd like to hear a history of what exactly has been going on. Is that okay? Okay. Let me just put some gloves on here. to check your pulse here. Good. And just stay nice and relaxed. Mm -hmm. You're doing great. regular pulse, a rate of 62 today, and your respirations are 16. Now, I would like to get a blood pressure. Now, you'll feel tightness from the cuff, but otherwise that it shouldn't be too uncomfortable. Is that okay with you? Great. Okay. Bit of a loud noise here as we get the cuff set up. Just 
relax your arm here. Cinch this down. Good. Okay. Now, as always, give me a moment to get set here. Excellent. Well, your blood pressure today was a bit tricky to get at first, but ultimately it was normal. Hold on one sec. Let's take this off. felt some extra pressure and I apologize for that but I wanted to make sure I got an accurate blood pressure. Abdominal pain can be no joke and one thing that is very reassuring are stable vital signs. Now let me enter yours into the computer briefly here. blood pressure 116 on 82 and that's reassuring and your pulse as we discussed was normal along with your respirations so you have reassuring vital signs now there is one vital sign that we're missing can you think of what that is it's very important if you're having abdominal pain it's your temperature I need to know if you have a fever or not that changes my differential diagnosis or what I'm thinking could be going on pretty dramatically so I'll take that now. Is that okay with you? Great. Now just open your mouth up for me. Good. And relax your tongue. Excellent. Okay. I'll just be a few seconds here, usually only 15 or 20 seconds, and we'll get a temperature. temperature so nothing to be alarmed with there so you have very stable vital signs and I'm glad to hear that it's important we check those things out first but I'd like to hear from you a little bit more about this abdominal pain I'm gonna just take some notes in the computer as you're telling me go ahead when did this start I understand And what does that feel like, the, the character of that? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I really am. Abdominal pain can be really difficult. Any nausea or vomiting? Okay. Are you still able to eat? Are you able to drink at all? Just water. Okay. Okay. And no fevers at home? Okay. Does anything seem to make the pain worse? Okay. Anything make it better? Mm hmm. Oh, the ibuprofen did help. Good. I'm glad.
Anything else that you'd like to tell me about? Okay. Good. And have you had any abdominal surgeries in the past? Okay. Taking all of your medications as we have them listed here? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Good. Okay. And still having normal bowel movements? Okay. Well, I really appreciate all of that information. It helps me to get a little bit more clear of a picture. Now, I will need to do an abdominal exam today. First, I'd like to take a listen to your heart and lungs, and then we'll move right into an abdominal exam. And depending, I may need to do an abdominal ultrasound here in the office, but we'll cross that bridge. Is that okay with you? Okay. I'll start by taking a listen to your heart and lungs. Let's start with your lungs. As you're familiar, for this, we'll have you breathe through your nose and out through your mouth. Nice and relaxed. We can do one together now. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. Excellent. Just like that. Good. I'll get ready now to take a listen to your lungs here. Deep breath through your nose, and out through your mouth. Good. In through the nose, and out through your mouth. Great. In through your nose, and out through your mouth. Good. And in through your nose once more. And out through your mouth. Very good. Would you like to take a listen today? I know you're not feeling well, but it's still relaxing. You would? Okay, I'll clean this off here. Sorry you're going through this. It's never fun. I'll, I'll put these on for you. good. As you could hear, I'm sure you're moving air very well, and it's not one of our big concerns today. I'm going to jump right into taking a listen to your heart, because I want to get to that abdominal exam. Is that okay? Great. Sounds normal. I'll let you take a listen here. We'll keep it brief today on the heart. So as you could tell, your heart sounds normal as well. Now what I'm going to have you do is lay down now on the exam table on your back. That way I can do an exam on your abdomen. Now we'll keep you covered with a sheet around your waistline and you'll keep the gown around your chest so that you're not exposed. Is that okay? Excellent. If you'd feel more comfortable, we can have a chaperone in the room for this exam. No? Okay, if you change your mind, we can have one of the nurses step in. Excellent, okay. 
I'll let you go ahead and change position and lie down on the exam table, and I'll be right back in. Okay, are you comfortable there? I'm gonna come on the other side of the exam table. You feel comfortable? Okay, very good. You just relax there, and we'll get started on the exam. I'm going to auscultate first, so that I don't change the bowel sounds by pressing around, okay? Great. Excellent. Normal bowel sounds as we'd expect. I just listen on both sides momentarily, but everything sounds normal. I'm going to go ahead and start with palpation of the abdomen. Is that okay? Great, okay. What we're gonna do is actually a percussion first here. So you'll just feel some pressure or a, kind of a sensation of me tapping on your abdomen. Here we are. Excellent. What you'll feel now is some light to deep palpation. We'll go in each quadrant. Now, where is it worst? Mm -hmm. We'll start away from that area, okay? Let's start in the left lower quadrant. Okay. A bit of pressure here. Good. Once more. Okay. No discomfort? We'll do left upper. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll go epigastric now. That's right around the belly button, or upwards towards the diaphragm, the spaces in between here. Kind of just working my way along here. No tenderness there? We'll go inferior to the umbilicus now, towards the bladder area. Any discomfort there? Okay. Now we'll go right upper quadrant. Just pressing in here. Mm -hmm. And right lower. Good, good, okay. I'm sorry that that's a little bit tender there. Uh, we're gonna do some special testing now, okay? I'm going to measure out from your hip bone to your umbilicus here. And right about here, I'm gonna push in. I'd like you to let me know if it hurts more when I press down or when I let go. Which would you say is worse? When I, okay, okay. We're going to check in the right upper quadrant now, okay? You're gonna feel pressure here from my hands, of hooking under the rib cage a bit, and now I'd like you to take a deep breath in. Good, no difficulty. It's a little uncomfortable. Okay, okay. Tell you what, I have ultrasound here. Let's take a look. I'm just gonna walk around and grab that. Okay, so. We're going to use that ultrasound probe, okay? And what we're gonna do is take a look at the gallbladder and we'll attempt to take a look for bowel, although that takes a little bit of practice. So we'll kind of do a lawnmower approach coming across your abdomen, okay? We'll grab some gel here. Good. A little gel. Good. Okay. Now you just stay nice and still. We're gonna take a look at that uh, gallbladder first here. Good. Good. Just 
looking at my monitor here. Got a good image of the gallbladder. Great. Good. Oh. My cable out of the way. Good. Okay. Take a deep breath in and hold it, please. Good. One more. Deep breath in and hold. do a bit of a lawnmower approach, which is where we go back and forth and across to look through the abdomen. Okay, well, this will help us look for anything like a bowel obstruction or maybe even appendicitis if we get lucky and are able to see things. Of course, we don't want you to have appendicitis, but we do want to check for it. Okay. Good. Good, that looks normal. We'll check your bladder now too, which sometimes we can have what's called free fluid hiding behind there. A little pressure here. Okay. Good, okay. Not much in there, probably went to the bathroom recently. Okay, I wanna take a look at your kidneys. This is another area where we can see free fluid and we can also evaluate the kidney. So cold on the side here. Mm -hmm. mm. We'll cut it the other way here. Good. Okay, I'm going to reach over and get the other side. Good. Good. Okay. Let me get that cleaned up for you. That's a lot of gel there. Okay, now I know it can be uncomfortable to lay in that position, so why don't we have you sit back up, get comfortable, I'll come back in and we can talk about the results. Then do any further exams that we may need to do. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. Hey there. Glad you're more comfortable now. Let's talk about the exam findings. So you do have some tenderness in your abdomen. It's a bit diffuse though, somewhat more on the right side. Now, pulling up the images here that I got from the ultrasound, it does not look like there's any gallstones, so that's reassuring. And there's no thickening of the wall. Actually looking at the kidneys, they also look good as well. No signs of stranding around them or uh, dilation of the kidneys, so not as likely to have some kind of a urinary obstruction. And uh, the bladder looks okay, no significant inflammation there, so less likely a urine infection. We didn't see much with the bowel exam. We tried to look, but it doesn't look like an obstructive pattern. And you're still moving your bowels, so that's reassuring. Now, as to what's going on, I'm not entirely sure. This could be something viral, or it could be more. Now, before we send you off to have a GI specialist look into things further, I think we should do a diet diary. All you have to do is keep track of what you're eating, and that way we can make sure this isn't something that's food-related. And of course, if anything worsens, if you were to develop a fever, inability to eat anything, or anything else that would concern you, of course, we would want to see you back sooner. However, given your reassuring vital signs and reassuring exam today, including the ultrasounds and physical exam, I think it would be okay to see you in a week. So, let's plan to have you come back in about one week now. We'll check back up and we'll check on that food diary. Does that sound like a plan to you? Great. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button so that you don't forget about our appointment next week. And if you enjoyed, please give this video the thumbs up. Thank you for coming in. We'll see you next week. Hello, and welcome back to Dr. Adam ASMR. I want to thank you for making your appointment this week. I'm excited to get into your exam 
and I understand that you're having some eye complaints, so don't worry, we're going to do a thorough exam of both of your eyes today, including ultrasound, visual acuity, color blindness, and a posterior retinal and posterior eye exam. So we'll be quite comprehensive today. Now, if it's all right with you, I'd like to get some information entered into the computer about what's been going on. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and tell me what exactly has been going on over the last two weeks, I think you mentioned? It's got to be difficult. Anytime we have changes to our vision, it's incredibly stressful, so don't worry, we're going to do a very thorough evaluation today to make sure we're not missing anything. Is that okay? Okay. What I would like to do first is actually start by getting a set of vitals. Is that alright with you? Okay. Our vital signs are just a basic evaluation of where our body is at. Consist of a blood pressure, an evaluation overall of your skin and color, and then a pulse rate and a respiratory rate. In my mind, there are four components, and the skin is equally as important in determining how you are doing as a whole. I can already see from talking to you that you're well perfused, that there's good blood flow around your body, and that I don't see any obvious rashes or lesions on the exposed portions of skin here today. I think given that your complaint is primarily eye in nature and your color appears well perfused, we'll go ahead and bypass any further skin exam for right now. We can always include that later during our physical exam. One thing I'd like to do is get a blood pressure. Since you've had some time to relax, it should be a relatively accurate reading. We like to make sure you can relax for at least five to 10 minutes before putting your arm around the level of your heart and having you relax while we take the blood pressure. That way we can try to avoid any white coat hypertension or any anxiety around this. Again, don't be alarmed if the number is elevated. It can be stressful for some to be in a doctor's office. Okay, I'm going to put the blood pressure cuff on your arm now, if that's okay. I'd like to explain how it works before we go any further so that you don't have any unnecessary anxiety. This is the blood pressure cuff. It's also more formally known as a sphygmomanometer. The sphygmomanometer restricts blood flow in your arm. By doing that, we can slowly deflate the air and listen with our stethoscope, allowing us to hear a initial sound, known as the systolic blood pressure, followed by a diminished or loss of that heartbeat sound that we hear. That is the diastolic number. Those correlate to pressures within the body that can help us treat you. So, you will feel the cuff get pretty tight, unfortunately. We have to essentially slow the blood flow down to a near stop, and then we'll quickly release it again to get that blood flowing and hear that systolic blood pressure. Don't worry, this is entirely harmless, and the duration of interrupted blood flow is very short, if it's even interrupted at all. Now, it's okay with you. I'll place this cuff on your right arm. Okay. Have you put your arm out? 
around here. Great. And we're just going to tighten this down a little bit. And we have the marker right over your artery. Essentially where we see your brachial artery and that will allow us to get an accurate reading. So you'll see I'll position the gauge to where I'm able to see it here. And this bulb or bulb uh, inflation device here will allow me to inflate the blood pressure cuff. So give me just one moment here, relax that arm. And before we do this, I'd like you to just take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Great. Okay. Anytime you're feeling stressed during this process or during any of our visits, feel free to take a nice deep breath. I'm going to get started. Is that okay with you? Okay. I was able to get your blood pressure. We did have to do a short reinflation there. Sometimes that valve can be a little bit sticky. Let me take this off and then I'm happy to tell you about your blood pressure here. Blood pressure was 118 on 78. That's entirely normal and it's a very good blood pressure. We check the blood pressure specifically when you're having eye complaints because we want to make sure we're not missing a condition known as hypertensive emergency. This would be a blood pressure so high that it could be affecting the blood vessels in the back of your eye. It's also important to remember that a long standing high blood pressure and other diseases like diabetes can affect the vessels of the eye, so it's important to keep those under control. Now, I'm going to take your pulse rate next. I'd like you to close your eyes and just take a deep breath through your nose and out through your mouth. Excellent. I'll borrow your wrist here. We'll take this for a full 30 seconds, just nice and relaxed here. Keep taking those nice deep breaths. Very good. Just about another 10 seconds here. Excellent. Okay. And what I do to get a pulse rate there is just multiply by two. Your pulse rate is 62. Very normal. It's actually even a bit slow. I'm not sure if maybe you've been exercising more. In athletes or those who do endurance exercise, uh, your blood pressure can actually, I'm sorry, not your blood pressure, but your pulse rate can actually be uh, lower or slower. So, uh, the last thing which you may not have even realized is I was counting your respirations or how many times you're breathing during that 30 second interval as well. The problem is if I tell you that I'm going to count your respirations, like right now, you'll change the pattern that you're breathing. Do you notice that? It's something we do 
breathing on a regular interval subconsciously, but when we're made aware of our breathing, we tend to breathe more irregularly and often more quickly. So I generally evaluate both at once. Your respiratory rate was 14. It's likely because of the deep breathing, but it's totally normal. Okay. Now, if it's all right with you, I would like to do a abbreviated head-to-toe exam. I think we're going to focus mainly on the eyes today. But to be thorough, I'd like to take a listen to your heart and lungs first. That way we can dedicate most of our time towards your head and eyes. Is that okay? All right. Okay, we'll get started with your heart and lungs. I know that you like to take a listen to your heart and lungs, so I'll be sure to clean off my stethoscope in between so that you can take a listen. I'll start with your heart. Is that all right? Okay. Just gonna feel your pulse here while I'm listening. Good. Excellent. And I'm gonna borrow both of your wrists here. Good. I just like to make sure the pulses are equal in the upper extremities. I'm going to reach down for your feet now, okay? I'm going to check the pulses and check for any swelling around your ankles. Okay. Okay. The pulses there, the dorsalis pedis, are both equal. That's the pulse on the front of your foot. Uh, and I don't notice any swelling in your legs, so that's a good sign. Your heart sounds entirely normal and I don't hear any murmurs, gallops, or rubs. I'm gonna clean this off and let you take a listen, if you'd still like. Okay. Okay, I'll put this on you. It's nice, isn't it? I know it's not the primary reason you came in today, but it is good to hear our own heart. Now, let me take a listen to your lungs. Again, because you're not having any respiratory complaint today, we're just going to listen on the front, and this will be more brief. Upper and lower lung fields on the right and left. I almost forgot to mention, I know you're familiar, but we'll do our deep breathing in through the nose and now out through the mouth. That uh, will help me to hear clearly if there's any abnormal lung sounds. Deep breath for me. And out. Good. Deep breath for me. And out, good. And I just go left and right to make sure I'm comparing both sides. Deep breath in. And out. Very good. And 
once more, deep breath in, and out. Excellent. Your lung sounds are clear, okay? I know you like to take a listen to these as well, and that's not a problem. We can do that. I'll go ahead and put this back on. on to our head exam and specifically the eyes which are bothering you today. Your lungs, as you heard, sound entirely normal and they're clear with equal breath sounds on both sides and equal chest rise. Okay, now I'm going to start by just palpating around your head to make sure we don't feel any masses or anything like that. Let me just get some hand sanitizer first here, okay? No pain there. Good, okay. Very good. So I just grossly examining your head can see that there's normal hair distribution, no rashes, no lesions. And it doesn't appear to cause you any tenderness or pain when I'm palpating around your scalp, which is good. I'm going to continue down into your neck now and check for paraspinal muscular tenderness, okay? this side. Good. And swallow. Excellent. And the other side. And swallow. Good. Okay. With that, I was able to palpate for any anterior or posterior cervical nodes. I didn't feel any. doesn't appear that there's any muscular changes, and your thyroid appears normal on my exam. So that's all good. Now, I'd like to get into the ear, nose, and throat exam, and then we'll do our neuro exam and our eye exam. I'm gonna take a look in your ears to make sure we're not missing something there, okay? All right. Just need to get out of my otoscope. I know you're familiar with this device by now. Here's our otoscope with a great light source. So I'll just do an external exam of the ear first and then an internal exam with the otoscope. Okay? We'll start on the right. Any pain as I'm kind of pulling back here on your ear? Okay, I don't see any mastoiditis or drainage. Alright, you'll feel just a little bit of pressure here, and a little uncomfortable as I place the otoscope in, okay, 
good clear tympanic membrane, no erythema, drainage, or fluid levels. I don't see any perforations or masses. Good, okay, we'll be coming out. Great. And we'll check the other side to compare. Okay, any discomfort as I'm tugging? No? Okay, good. No lesions or rashes. Discharge, good. We're gonna, you'll feel a little pressure here. Uncomfortable. One, two. Good. I'm just taking a look here. Mm hmm. Good. No air. I'm sorry. There's no fluid levels in there. No erythema. It looks good. No masses or discharge that I can appreciate. Okay. And um, we'll be coming out. Okay. The external auditory canals appeared healthy as well. I'm going to change this tip here. So, no evidence of otitis interna or externa. No signs of a cholesteatoma or anything else particularly concerning at this time. It's as we'd expect. I'm just going to take a brief look up your nose, okay? If you can tilt your head back just a touch. Good. Okay. Okay. Very good. If you could take a deep breath in and hold it for me. any excess mucus drainage or production, no erythema or swelling of the turbinates. Everything appears healthy. Go ahead and change this tip. And we'll take a look in your mouth here. Uh, if you just open up for me and say, ah. Uh -huh. Good. And with the tongue to the roof of your mouth. Good. Very good. I think that we'll just get our ophthalmoscope set up here. Very good. I think that your ears, nose, and mouth all appear normal. I think next we should do a cranial nerve exam followed by our thorough ophthalmologic exam. Would that be okay with you? Okay. First thing we're going to do is start with that nerve exam. Now. I know you know about the extraocular motion testing, and I think it's actually quite relaxing. So let's go ahead and start with that again, following the lighted tip of my pen here. Straight ahead. Good. Good. Very good. emotions are intact. Have you noticed any difficulty with your smell? No. Okay, very good. All right. I'm going to take a look at your actual pupils now. Just looking straight ahead for me here. And we'll be much more thorough with your pupils in a moment here. I just like to be consistent with my exams to make sure that I don't miss something. I like to go in the same order each time. Very good. Okay. I'm going to have you close your eyes. We're going to test the sensation on your face. Okay. Today we'll just skip straight to light touch here. For cotton ball. Okay. This should work. If you close your eyes and just let me know which portion of your face you feel is on. Okay. Good. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Good. 
me to tell me if there's one or two locations that I'm touching. Go ahead and keep your eyes closed. We'll take a deep breath in through our nose and out. Good, let's go ahead and try. One. safe to say the sensation is intact on your face. Now we'll just test the motor component of that trigeminal nerve. Do me a favor and bite down. And bite down once more. Good. And then just open and close your jaw slowly. I'm going to feel your temporal mandibular joint. Good. That feels normal. I'm going to tap in the temporal region here, especially because you're having eye pain. Let me know if this causes any pain. Okay. No. Good. That's very good. Okay. Can you raise your eyebrows up like this for me? Good. And smile. Excellent. Can you frown? discomfort doing that? Okay. We're going to just check grossly on your hearing. Let me know which side you hear this snapping. Good. Very good. That's correct. Now, believe it or not, we actually checked most of the cranial nerves in the back of the throat when I assessed with the otoscope tip to look in the back. There was no uvular deviation, no deviation of your tongue or lesions that I saw. So that's all good. The last thing that I need to check is just cranial nerve 11, the spinal accessory nerve. So if you could please just shrug your shoulders up, just like this. Good. And then turn your head to both sides. Good. I see equal muscle tone in the sternocleidomastoid when you do that. So, I don't have any concerns there. Now, I'd like to get into our visual exam today. Before we start shining bright lights in your eyes, we'll do a visual acuity test, and we'll also test for color blindness. Is that okay? All right. We'll do a very simple visual acuity test here. And I'd like to remind you that if you enjoy these appointments, please give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of these appointments. Now, here's that vision test. Go ahead and read the lowest line you can for me with both eyes open. Wow. Very good. That's correct. If you could cover your right eye, please. Now read the lowest line you can. Great. That's correct. Covering the other eye now, I'll have you read the lowest line you can backwards. Very good. Okay. We'll just evaluate pupil size again here real quick. Great. Excellent. Okay. Your vision is doing great. It's consistent with our last exam. Give me just one moment, I will pull up our color blindness test here. Okay, what I'd like you to do is tell me what number you see there. It can be tough. No problem if you can't. Okay, let's check that. 
That's correct. Next number. Mm -hmm. Great. One more. Mm -hmm. Very good. And last color combo here. That color does seem to be easier for most. Very good. Okay. I think it's safe to say that you're not colorblind, and your vision seems to be doing well. So I'm glad to see both of those things. Let me go ahead and take a look inside of your eye now. This is that exam with the bright light. Uh, after we take a look, I would like to test the pressures in your eyes. We'll use something called a tonal pen for that, but your eye will be totally numb. I'll put drops in prior to that. Okay? All right. Let's take a look in that eye first. This is where you're going to look over my right shoulder. I'll use my right eye to look in your right eye. That way our faces aren't too close to each other, but it can be a little bit uncomfortable. If you get uncomfortable, just let me know and we can stop. Okay? Great. All right, just looking straight ahead. I'm gonna just take a peek in here. Good, optic cup to disc appears normal. Good, I don't see any lesions, good, okay. Look straight in the light, great, okay, relax. We'll do the other side now. Just look over my shoulder, good, and Over my shoulder, great. Optic optic disc is normal. I don't see any hemorrhages. Okay, look right in the light. Beautiful, okay. And we're just gonna take a look at the conjunctiva around the eye here. A little pressure. Good. And on the top. Mm -hmm. And on the other side. The conjunctiva around your eye appears healthy, and the back of your eye, as far as I can tell, with my exam, doesn't show any active lesions or concerns. That's all good. It's all very good. Uh, just from doing that exam, though, I'm not able to evaluate the pressures. And one additional condition that I'd like to test for would be an optic or a retinal detachment uh, it's a concerning condition that can cause blindness. We can look for it with ultrasound. So let's check those pressures in your eye first, and then after that, we can do the ultrasound. So we'll go ahead and use that tonal pen. It just has a fine tip here, and uh, we'll tap that against your eye, okay? Let me put in these eye drops first here. I'm going to have you close your eyes and what I'm going to do is just actually put the medicine right in the center here and just open your eyes and let it roll into your eye there good it's a little bit uncomfortable it does burn a little bit but and look around for me inside your eye good that area will be numb now okay so I'm going to go ahead and start, you'll hear it tapping. Okay. Good. Twelve. Twelve. One more on this side. And one's over here. So they're both reading normal pressures in your eyes, okay? I know that can be a little bit uncomfortable there. If you feel like you need to blink, please go ahead. Okay, I'm going to get the ultrasound probe ready now. Okay, so we've worked with the ultrasound probe before. 
this is a little bit uncomfortable. It's going to go right on your eye, just like this. But it's not a lot of pressure, and the gel will keep this from being too uncomfortable on your eye, okay? It's important that you keep your eye closed during this. Now, even though your eye's closed, you can still control where it looks. That will help me to see the back of your eye. So it's important that when I say look left, you look left. When I say look up, you look up, and so forth. You'll be able to see your lens, your retina in the back of your eye, and evaluate for any detachment, which is our big concern. Okay, we'll start over here. I'll have you close your eyes and just stay nice and relaxed. Just looking at our ultrasound screen here. Look left for me. Good. Look right. Great. Look up. And look down. Look straight. Good. Look left then right quickly. Good. Left then right quickly. Good. Okay. Let me uh Clean your eye off here. Good. Okay, we'll do the other side when you're ready. Do you need a second? That's no problem. Let's do a deep breath. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. Excellent. Okay. Ready? Great. Close those eyes for me. Look left, look right, look up, look down, okay, look straight, look left then right, a little more quickly, left then right, a little left then right, okay, relax, good. results onto this ultrasound here. Pressures were 12. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that we have some good news today. Through all of our examinations, everything seems normal. Your eye exam was normal, and your vision was the same as it's been in the past, so that's good. Now, before we talk about the results of the ultrasound exam, I would like to remind you one more time to please like this video if you've enjoyed it, and of course, subscribe so that you don't miss your follow-up appointment here at Dr. Adam ASMR. Now, let's jump into the ultrasound. It was actually entirely normal. Your retina appears normal. I don't notice any lens dislocation or trauma to the eye. And your ocular pressures are normal. That indicates that there's no glaucoma or swelling in the eye, which is good. Your cranial nerves are normal. Your heart and lungs, as you heard, sound great and your vital signs today were very normal. So, all in all, I'm not exactly sure what was causing your discomfort. I think the best thing for us is going to be close follow-up. In fact, why don't we make you an appointment for next week? Does that work? Okay. Great. Again, to make sure that you're able to make your appointment, Please click on that subscribe. There's almost 60% of you who come to these appointments and forget to subscribe. Thank you again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.